You're listening to Bell Book and Candle with Mela Borowski. Thoughts from a Southern Witch. Should have studied witchcraft. Should have learned to ride a broom. So me and my black cat could fly through the skies underneath the moon. Hey y'all, it's Mela Borowski. Letha, or Midsummer, which is summer solstice, occurs this month in the Northern Hemisphere on June 20th, 2020 at 5.44 p.m. Eastern. It usually occurs around June 21st or June 22nd, but this year is June 20th. The exact date depends on the sun. So if you're listening to this and it's not 2020, you'll have to look it up. It's the longest day of the year and the sun is at its highest power, as opposed to winter solstice, which is the longest night of the year. So it's all about growth and abundance and fertility, balance and strength. It also has a main theme of protection, cleansing and clearing using fire and smoke and water. Solstice comes from the Latin word solstitian, which translates to sun stands still. For ancient folk, anything happening up in the heavens was seen as important, sometimes even to be feared. And Stonehenge was built in such a way that it marks the summer solstice. Romans also celebrated midsummer with a festival to Juno, Jupiter's wife, and goddess of women and childbirth. June, in fact, was named for Juno. And because she was associated with marriage and family, June has remained to this day known for being a wedding month. On Midsummer, Vesta was also celebrated. Offerings would be given to her in her temple on Midsummer for house blessings. And then in ancient China, summer solstice was a time to celebrate the feminine or yin energy and celebrate the goddess of light. In ancient Gaul, it was called the Feast of Epona. Epona was a goddess of fertility, and she was associated with horses. And as happened to many pagan celebrations, when Christianity moved into pagan areas, they rebranded them into Christian celebrations. So with summer solstice, it was kind of rebranded St. John's Day uh, for John the Baptist. Many of the symbols and the activities for modern holidays and celebrations have roots in ancient paganism, and you can see this in St. John's Day. In Greece, on this day, unmarried women gather water from the sea. They put it in a pot beneath a fig tree. They put a personal belonging in the water, and they believe it gives it prophetic power so that the girls can dream of their future husband. They also have jumping over bonfires, And in Poland, on Ivan Kupala Day, which Kupala kind of sounds like Cupid, right? Uh, On summer solstice, or Ivan Kupala Day, women would wear flower wreaths. They'd go down to the river, float them, and men on the other side would try to catch the flower wreaths. And they would say that whatever lady's flower wreath that you would catch, that would be who you um, you would marry. So you may have noticed that pagan celebrations often incorporate fire. And this is no different. Um, Midsummer, summer solstice is celebrated by bonfires on top of hills. So these bonfires or need fires were thought to keep evil away from the homes and the villages. People would even jump through the bonfires for good luck in the next year. And if you got yourself a blackened behind, that was even more lucky. And folks would run through their fields with torches so that the smoke would cleanse their fields. This is a prayer for divination from a book of pagan prayer. Speak to me as you follow the wind, leaves of oak above my head. Follow perfectly the waves of the air ocean, making known to me their invisible pattern. Out of the well of the world they flow, carrying the wisdom that is her gift. Carry it to me also, give to me, oak spirit, the knowledge that you have, the knowledge that I seek. And so it is. (music) 
Solar wheels were important to many ancient cultures. It was often seen as the symbol of the chariot wheels of the solar deities, the sun riding his or her chariot across the sky. There's recorded evidence from the 1400s from Northern Europe and Great Britain of people lighting large hay wheels on fire and sending them down the hill towards a body of water. If they made it down the hill without falling over, then it was a sign of a good harvest to come. It's probably much more ancient than that. So I wouldn't suggest a big ass flaming solar wheel at your next midsummer celebration, but you do you. It would be spectacular, but you could still make smaller solar wheels as symbols. So you could craft a solar wheel to hang as a decoration or to decorate your altar. You'll need vine of some sort, like grapevine. We've got wild muscadine grapes growing all over our property here in South Carolina. So you would wind the vine into a wreath and then use more vine or sticks to create the vertical and the horizontal spokes of your wheel. Once that's secured, you can decorate your sun wheel, your solar wheel with whatever you like, such as items to represent the elements, like a seashell, feather, that sort of thing, or even just pretty summery ribbons. You could also bake bread in the shape of a solar wheel. This would really make a great offering bread for your land spirits or your patron gods or goddesses. You can make them out of clay. What else? Have you ever created a sun wheel? And if you did, what did you make it out of? What did you do with it? Send me a message about it and I might use it in a future podcast episode here this month. So midsummer is a time of fire and water. The sun's energy is that of fire, but the plants need water to grow as well. And everything is growing right now. So these are two very important elements. So while lighting a fire or a candle is is really a good plan for midsummer, I think having a cup or a chalice of water is just as important. So this would be a great time of year to visit water sources like waterfalls. I love waterfalls, moving water really um, helps me connect to the divine or the ocean or special wells or streams. I plan on visiting a well called God's Acre. It's a healing springs here in South Carolina. It's not too far from me, but I've never been. I plan on going there this month and I plan on bringing an offering to the water spirit there. So when I go this month, I'm going to post pictures for my patrons on Patreon. So if you're a patron, watch out for that. Um, You could also tie summer herbs or flowers together like rue, like a a yarrow flower head. And you could use it to sprinkle just any kind of spring water, even spring water that you would buy around your home to cleanse and to purify it. So think about what you could do with, with water at this time of year. And if you celebrate winter solstice, you might remember reading or celebrating the battle between the Oak King and the Holly King. So at midsummer, summer solstice, the Holly King defeats the Oak King and the second half of the year begins. Solstice being a time of balance of light and dark is a great time to really contemplate balance in your life. What is out of balance? What have you been balancing really well? What do you need to work on? This is from Crone's Book of Magical Words by Valerie Worth. For sunrise at the summer solstice, when June is ripe and the days are full and sun comes early to claim his throne, walk before dawn to a silent height and set three stones in an eastward line. Stand behind them while his light is rising over the distant land. When he is there in the eastern air, offer these words. Son of the year, I move this earth to greet thy sign and set myself to honor thee in the earth's design. Perfect the stones to mark his face, follow their shadow twelve short paces. Pluck some leaf for an amulet. Consider 
consider this a great time of year for protective magic. You can do protective magic at any time, but this time of year is just perfect for it. The ancients would use smoke to cleanse, and ancient peoples all over the world have used smoke and other means to do cleansing and clearing. So you could use whatever herbs or incense that you like to give a smoke cleansing to your home or your office or your land. There is a cute protection rattle that you can make for Letha that I saw, two shells. And you place a small crystal inside, I would say a yellow or red one if you have it, like red jasper to represent fire. And then you use twine to bind it and tie it closed and then use that rattle to clear and cleanse. If you have created a fire for summer solstice, you could use the ashes once they've cooled to make a protective amulet. There are a lot of different ways to do this. You could put some in a tiny jar or even a big jar, seal it up like a witch's bottle. Um, you could put other herbs and things in it as well. Or you could even knead the ashes into clay to form the amulet. You could also use the ashes with essential oil to create a blessing or protection oil. I've done this before with ashes of sage that I've used. I then take the ashes, I mix it with um, essential oils to make a protective oil, which I use to mark sigils on homes that I go to clear and bless. These ashes could also be put into your garden for blessing your crops. If you still have a Yule wreath in your home that you made around Yule, which is winter solstice, you could burn it in your Letha bonfire. You could also make a solar elixir of some sort with a healing or a regenerative herb or flower, like elderflower. Elderflower and elderberries are so healing. Or you could use something like chamomile, something that is um, in season right now. And with an emphasis on fire, I was really thinking that a great craft for this time of year would be making candles. You don't have to go out and buy fancy tools or anything like that. Candles can be made very easily by even just going to the flea market or the thrift store, getting old candles, melting them and reworking them or, or pouring them into new shapes or candle holders. Or you could go the whole old fashioned way and make your own candles as well. And you can set intentions into them. You can put herbs in them. Specific colors could be for specific needs. So that would be a fun June craft. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. So let me explain. It's totally free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It is everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And Bell Book and Candle is so thankful to have this service. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. So let's talk about fairies and fairy magic. This is traditionally a time to honor the fairies. I am not an expert on this topic, so please do your research. You will find entire fairy traditions in paganism, but you'll also find those that say respect them, but don't do anything to piss them off or get them to even pay attention to you. So you're going to find both sides of the spectrum on that. And so you're going to have to figure that out for yourself. For myself, I have gleaned a whole new respect for the Fae folk, especially since last midsummer. I had a women's retreat at my home. We had a big bonfire outside. We did ritual around. And during that ritual, I invited the Fae, who I know are on my property, along with other land spirits, in what I thought was a very respectful way, basically just saying, we know you're there. We respect you. You're welcome. Um, You're welcome to be here. And that evening, there was a microburst or maybe a lightning strike, but it hit the tree right by our bonfire. And we woke up with the tree falling right beside our bonfire. Thankfully, it didn't break anything or um, hit the fencing or anything. 
the chairs that we had, some of them were metal around our fire, had been thrown completely across the yard, almost to the road. And we're a good distance from the road. So that's why I think it might have been a microburst. But the odd thing about it was outside of that area, everything was calm. The porch, my back porch had a recycling bin full of cardboard, wasn't even touched. And of course, there's no way to prove that this was the power of the Fae or, hey, maybe our own power did it. I don't know. But you better believe that we all had a deeper respect after that. I have an altar in my garden that I regularly leave offerings for not only the Fae, but for the other land spirits that I know are here. So yes, if you feel comfortable, you can leave them offerings. You can honor and respect them. I've read that shiny things like glass beads are good, crystals like moonstone or selenite, cakes or other sweet breads, bread and butter, alcohol, seashells, acorns, berries, honey. Just always be respectful and always go in with gratitude. And it's my personal belief that it shouldn't be just a one time, one, once a year at midsummer, you go and you honor them. Um, if you want to honor the land spirits, I think you should do that more than once a year, throughout the year. That's why I have my altar down in my garden. So here's a midsummer fairy oil recipe that I found on Pinterest. It's two parts rose, one part chamomile, one part lavender, three daisy petals, three pinches of vervain, and two pinches of elderflower. And then from Anne Moira, I read that if you soak thyme in olive oil and you anoint your eyes at night, you'll be able to see the fairy folk. From the Book of Crystal Spells by Ember Grant, on page 77, we have a sun elixir. And she says that you can use this elixir for any spell involving solar energy, projective energy, success, strength, or protection. You're going to set it in sunlight for as long as you like, as long as you remove it before nightfall. And so she suggests a piece of amber um, as a crystal to use to make this elixir. Visualize the light entering the stone, penetrating, and then passing into the water and fusing it drawing the minerals from the stone into the liquid, their molecules making a metaphysical connection. And then use this chant over your elixir. By light of sun, this water be charged with crystal energy. Sunlight warm, shining through, water clear, fresh and new. As a wrap up of this episode, I'm going to give just some basic correspondences for Letha. So the purpose, honoring the sun god, honoring the pregnant goddess in the beginning of harvest. For symbols and decorations, you've got the solar, the sun wheel, the sun, oak, birch, and fir branches, sunflowers, red or yellow flowers, love amulets, seashells, summer fruits and flowers, fire, water, stone circles, sundials, so witch's ladder. For colors, you've got blue, green, gold, orange, yellow, red, white. For food and drink, here's some suggestions. Red wine, herb bread, pastries, cold cooked meat, fried chicken, potato salad with boiled eggs, fresh veggies and in-season fruit, lemons, make lemonade, oranges, summer picnic, honey, and with that mead, you can make sun tea. So for goddesses, we've got Mother Earth, Gaia, Breed, Bridget, some people call her, Venus, Aphrodite, Aurora, Bass, Yamaya, Astarte, Vesta, Freya, Hathor, Ishtar, any love goddesses really, any fire goddesses or water goddesses. For gods, you've got the Father, Son, uh, Bell, Sol, Helios, Balder, Horus, Apollo, Ra, Cronunos, Pan, the Oak King, the Holly King, Fire Gods, Water Gods. So for animals and mythical creatures, think about bees, wren, hawks, the robin, horses, the eagle, K, 
cattle, satyrs, fairies, the phoenix, dragon, butterflies, and caterpillars. For crystals, lapis lazuli, diamond, amber, carnelian, citrine, tiger's eye, green gemstones, really like emerald or jade. You could also think about copper and gold. For herbs and plants, think about what's in bloom right now. You've got honeysuckle, red clover, dandelion, apple, mugwort, chamomile, rose, wild rose, oak blossoms, lily and lavender, fennel, elder, like the elder flowers we mentioned earlier, mistletoe, hemp, thyme, larkspur, wisteria, vervain, St. John's wort's a big one, and rue as well, fern, I've got a lot of fern out in my yard, wormwood or pine, heather, yarrow, chicory, mint, chickweed, and Mora in the book Green Witchcraft recommends these nine herbs for your altar this time of year. Betony wood or basil, chamomile, fennel or lavender, lemon balm or dianthus, mullen, rue, St. John's wort, thyme, and vervain. So for incense and essential oils, I've got listed cedar, sage, heliotrope, saffron, orange, frankincense, and myrrh, wisteria, cinnamon, that's very fiery, mint, rose, lemon, lavender, sandalwood, pine, really anything musky, anything cleansing, anything spicy for the fire. So for magical workings, we did talk about a lot of various things, but think about the nature spirits, the land spirits, fey magic, earth healing, divination, love, protection, rededication. And here are some final ideas. We did talk about a few of these, but some final ideas for celebrating Letha or midsummer, summer solstice. An all night vigil to greet the sun, cutting divining or dowsing rods, gathering herbs, hand fastings or weddings, gathering mistletoe, druids would do this during this time of year, leaping between fires, Women walking naked through gardens to ensure fertility. I found that on a site by Shirley Two Feathers. That sounds interesting. Honoring the mother, creating a prosperity or abundance altar, collecting the morning dew, creating a flower mandala, lavender wands, dancing. May the sun shine upon you. May love surround you. May the pure light within you guide you on your way. Y'all be blessed. Thank y'all for listening to Bell Book and Candle. You can follow Mella on Facebook and Instagram at Bell Book Candle SC. That's Bell, B-E-L-L-E. Or become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and support the work of Bell Book and Candle at patreon.com forward slash bellbookcandle.